कॉरपोरेट वेल्थ का इन्वेस्टमेंट के समय की मांग है हमारा एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर में एक्सपोर्ट एक बहुत बड़ी अवसर है बहुत बड़ी संभावना है उस क्षेत्र को हमें बल देना पड़ेगा फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकोनॉमी क्यों हम सबका सपना क्यों नहीं होना चाहिए भारत दुनिया के पहली पांच इकोनॉमी में कैसे प्रवेश करेगा भारत एक्सपोर्ट में कैसे बढ़ावा दे मेक इन इंडिया में कैसे बढ़ावा दे स्टार्टअप की दुनिया में हमारे नौजवान बहुत कर रहे हैं जय जवान जय किसान जय विज्ञान अब जय अनुसंधान So on trending at 10 tonight we are going to talk about whether this is Modi's budget blueprint do we now know what to expect from the union budget let me introduce my guest this evening professor arun kumar he's a noted economist tehsin punawala is a political analyst is with us uh, we've got shantanu gupta who's also a political analyst joining us from delhi and uh, we have pragya bhushan a banking advocate also a political analyst i want to begin with you professor arun kumar first when the prime minister says why aren't corporates investing in agriculture we must encourage this how can we improve make in india startup india exports jobs he talks about jay anusandhan which means more research and development focus on developing tourism uh, stress on infrastructure scaling up skill development is this stating the obvious or is this a blueprint for what ex- what we can expect from the budget and most importantly will this help so you know the budget will have all this <clears throat> but the question is how much resources can we allocate for uh, any of these schemes <coughs> and given the fact that we've lost in the last uh, year's budget around 1.6 lakh crores and therefore we had to cut back expenditures to keep the fiscal deficit at roughly about 3.4% that's not a good augury and you know the uh, economy is slowing down you know the latest quarter being 5.8% the chances are the tax revenues would not be very buoyant you know as happened last year so therefore if we don't have enough resources then we will not be able to spend enough but i think what the prime minister is saying is let the corporate sector invest in agriculture but you know the corporate sector will be in the organized sector but the problems of the economy are originating from the unorganized sector the unorganized sector got hit first by demonetization then gst then the nbfc crisis and the digitization so we need to actually cater to the unorganized sector first if we are to uh, increase demand in the economy and it's because of the, the fact that the unorganized sector is 94% of the employment and 45% of the output if the unorganized sector remains in crisis then employment will remain in crisis demand will be short so we have on the one hand food stocks on the other hand 40% women and children are malnourished so if they were eating enough they were getting enough nutrition then the food stocks would not be there so in other words we need to cater to the unorganized sector how do we cater to the unorganized sector in the budget that is the critical thing how do we generate more employment you know because when we generate more employment then there'll be more demand and then there's a demand then the thing will increase so at the moment if you look at the rbi's data capacity utilization in the economy is down to roughly 75 to 78% and at that level the investment doesn't revive you know because if there's excess capacity then investment will actually lead to more losses so okay. we need to revive demand in the economy first in the unorganized sector that will also feed into the organized sector demand because the re- demand sh- shortfall has gone from the unorganized sector to the organized sector okay now that's significant because you know the the numbers that we are showing on screen uh, are, are, are perhaps or, or perhaps are going to reiterate exactly what professor arun kumar is saying tehsin i'll come to you in just a moment uh, let me come to you pragya and then shantanu growth dips to lowest in 5 years those figures on your screen right now unemployment highest in 45 years agricultural growth dips by 2.9 agricultural income growth lowest in 4 years auto sales growth lowest in 3 years air travel growth slowest in 6 years i spoke to a lot of people in the government and they say that when you talk about auto sales and air travel that's not a measure uh, of of how how healthy an economy is the government realizes and some action will be taken my point is what the prime minister seems to suggest at this moment is obviously that sentiment he realizes something needs to be done for the economy the question is is it enough uh, sanket actually uh, i was listening to the whole speech of prime minister and uh, perhaps uh, there were some major points missing in that which were there in last tenure of the modi government which are not existing as of now like affordable housing housing for all which was a plan for 2022 but it was somehow missing from everywhere and if you look at the nbfc's condition of the nbfc's 
that is deteriorating day by day. And uh, if we relate to an, uh, this affordable housing sector, that is majorly funded by NBFCs, not even by the banks. And if um, uh, like major giants like DHFL, India Bulls are completely shutting down, they are not even doing an out of business, how will they survive, I do not understand. And where are those uh, actual uh, projects, the big projects which was uh, in last tenure of Modi government are completely out of sight. Now they are mm. talking about uh, irrigation, agriculture, they are talking about uh, uh, grassroots level of uh, employment and all those things, but ha uh, what happened to the last tenure and what they promised in last tenure. Okay. So, that is a major concern and in any in any economy, you know, the banks and the NBFCs are the backbone and if they do not work well, I do not think any business can work well or any business and, can and run around. And you do not see that being mentioned in, in any of the speeches or… The whole or crisis no of repeat. NBFC was completely missing. The whole project about affordable housing was completely… Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Shantanu, Shantanu, would you mind if I if I get in another uh, or accommodate another view from Tehsin and then come come to you, because it appears to be a bit of a three is to one against not, you. Not so let me not let me quickly get in all the views and then I'll come to you. Tehsin, no, <clears throat> there are economic indicators that have that have been lied to by us. The GDP, sir, hinted 5.8%. But, the, but there are many economists who doubt the GDP figures as well because we know that's been tinkered with. We now know that job and employment, uh, unemployment is a 45-year-old high. When this data came out, the Prime Minister was accusing economists of lying and the, and, and the organization of lying. You cannot be like the cat that shuts your eye and think that the problems disappeared. Pragya is absolutely right. I am an entrepreneur. The banking uh, system today is in, is in stress, is in distress. As an entrepreneur today, I am not investing in this country anymore. I am not investing in any small business. I invest in small businesses. I am scared. You have a complete real estate crisis that is staring at you in the face. So the point is there is no roadmap ahead for us and the Honourable Prime Minister did not give us any roadmap except for slogans. We've heard plenty of those in the first five years when you, the media, questioned the figures that were being raised all were called anti-nationals and they were, all were mocked. Today we know that's coming and there is the RBI crisis that, and we know what's happening in the RBI. So we need answers from our Prime Minister because at the end of the day he's our Prime Minister and he needs to lead us forward. Okay, Shantanu, Shantanu, now I come to you. Among all the things that have already been mentioned, Shantanu, let me just quickly add this small, one more fact. You've got India Inc. You've got leaders like Uday Kotak who say, where are the Indian manufacturers of smartphones? And where are the brands even in our home market? You've got Anand Mahindra who says the code on wages bill is key. Could it perhaps be the signal of the government's intent to introduce significant reforms? You see, India Inc., uh, economists, all of them, they're kind of reflecting a sentiment. I wouldn't say fear. There are some who reflect fear. But many or all reflect a sentiment which is not positive. How do you respond? See, Saket, first on the macroeconomy, I think it will be very parochial and naive to comment uh, just based on a quarter on an on economy like India. I think this is the first time in uh, more than a decade that Moody's have improved our rating, investment uh, rating. This is the first time that we have such a tight fiscal deficit with along with a very low inflation. The low inflation, in fact, the food basket inflation touched as low as 2%. So that's a, I think first first of all we have seen the fiscal uh, uh, fiscal prudence, right? On the on the on the on, on the large base side, first time we have in the country such a large banking base, and now the credit is available from Mudra and lot of NBFCs, lot of microfinance organization working very closely with SIDBI and making sure credit is available to to this large banking base that's come through through Jandan accounts. No, so. See, uh, any yeah. any industry what? body, industry people, mm. and the industry tycoons, mm. industry tycoons commenting and 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 expressing their wish list just before the budget is very obvious. No, this is not just a whatever wish government do. I'm give sure. You the, uh, uh, one some more, wishes, one more, and one just more. before just just before the budget, you will find wish list wishing something from Absolutely, the government. Absolutely, but now I want to talk about the Walmart example. I don't know. I mean, this is perhaps debatable. Many would say not the best example to give, but given Walmart's own history, but You've got Walmart, which is now thinking of stopping its investment. Right. 
they were in fact you have flipkart and these are reports you have flipkart heading for an initial public offer in 2022 in the united states this may mark reports suggest the exit of the largest investor for flipkart walmart they do not know and the reason why this is happening shantanu is that the e-commerce rules in this country which were introduced only very recently to streamline the process they say that this made the market really complicated this is just one of the many examples that i am citing let me quickly take in your comment and then the other guest please <clears throat> see uh, sanket i think you, this, this is a the point bang on see we 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 from last 70 years had a hangover of social soci socialist narivan economy where earning money was a sin any government which even a pro market cannot change it like this even even a government like bjp will say uh, will has faced in 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 this tenure even atal bihari government uh, save huge huge resistance from lot of lot of mazdoor songs and lot of sudeshi jagran months of the sang parivar itself so such change in mindset from from a very very government led economy to a market led economy uh, is is a, is a, is a uh, no but then what sort of a message shift. are you sending but at least now here is a company i'm not bad for them we're, but here is a we're, we're, here is a situation where you've got investment coming in and then perhaps even going out simply because your rules are complicated do you think these are perils <coughs> then how do you address see, the see, issue of sentiment uh, I, i think corporate wars corporate wars are corporate wars see see sanket corporate wars are very complicated they will never tell that they are facing a very huge competition from amazon and that's why they are reducing the investment they will try to put on the put on the government so corporate sure. wars and corporate messages sure, are sure. complicated fair enough uh, fair enough i'm not denying that completely that's why i said it may not be the best of the examples to give i'm not denying that com i'm i'm not uh, i don't deny that completely uh they seen as well as professor uh, arun kumar professor kumar you go first so you've heard the what the government seems to say uh, i think shantanu is reflecting exactly what we've heard from the government also that look uh, the mudra yojana is there you know the, the, these key pet projects that the government keeps right. talking about we've heard this in so, in modi one as well so you know we'd heard that mudra generated a lot of jobs you know in crores <clears throat> but when in february the mudra data was supposed to be released it wasn't released now that indicates that there's some problem about job creation in mudra you know the average loan that is given under mudra is roughly of the order of about 47000 uh, to 50000 whereas the average investment in a small micro unit is about 2 and a half lakh and the average employment is 1.7 so if 2 and a half lakh generate 1.7 employment then 40000 or 50000 is unlikely to generate much employment so i think 95% of the loans were in that uh, category where there were you know hardly any employment was generated and that's why perhaps the mudra data wasn't uh, released the second point is about corporates you know whether it be multinationals and others why are they not investing more why is it that our rate of investment has fallen from 2011 12 when it had peaked at about 36 37% to 30 32 percent it mm. is because the demand is short if the demand is short profitability is not there so walmart would be looking not only at competition from amazon but also whether it can generate enough profit if the market is booming then of course uh, profitability would be there and that's where i think the uh, prime minister's you know target of dollar 5 trillion economy in 5 years you know we have to look at that can we achieve that you know if we could achieve that then i think you know multinationals will come no matter what the the difficulties are It's because very important be profitability point. but given that we have 5.8 percent rate of growth today to achieve an average of 12.5 percent to double the economy we would require an 18 or 19 percent rate of growth towards the end of the period which is almost impossible even to achieve 12.5 percent is almost impossible you know to achieve 18 or 19 percent rate of growth is you know unlikely you know mm. so in other words we have to temper our judgment about it and we have to come up with some realistic plan and if like last year to cut keep our fiscal deficit at 3.4% we cut our expenditure in the budget by 1.6 lakh crores if you do that then demand will remain short so unless you allow the fiscal deficit to rise uh, somewhat okay. you know you are going to be in trouble so uh, businessmen in fact today are asking you know the meeting that was held with the prime minister that the fiscal deficit be allowed to rise so that demand can be created in the economy so in the short run demand is the big problem you can do labor reform and other reform it will have long term impact but 
but by then the economy if it's going down they will okay, also very, not have much okay very very quickly professor kumar before i go to the others this is significant and we're going to devote the next 5 minutes to this the prime minister suggested that there should be corporates who should take up responsibility in the agriculture sector how do you look at this move because truth be told we do not know the modalities we do not know what part in agriculture uh, does the government want the corporates to take up so as a proposal so, as a proposition yeah. how do you look at this so you know what obviously they'll do is allow land pooling to take place big corporates when they come in they'll go in for plantation and other commercial crops etc but the point is that the problem in agriculture is that there's massive amount of disguised unemployment there now the corporates will be mechanizing the whole thing and therefore there'll be no employment generation where do these people shift so i think we have to be very careful and have a holistic package we can't just say corporates go in and they start investing in agriculture because as it is you know employment elasticity in agriculture is close to zero because there's already tractorization harvester combines and uh, <coughs> threshers that are coming in so, and there's 47% of the workforce in agriculture so <coughs> we have to consider not only corporates investing but also what would it mean for employment what would it mean for small farmers what would it mean for you know uh, marginal farmers turning into casual laborers you know so it's a very big thing you know so unless we see the whole and uh, proposal as well yes uh tehsin very quickly and then shantanu tehsin Spe specifically so, on the point so, of corporate so when, corporates in agriculture so it sounds as a good it's a sounds like a good idea that corporates come into agriculture it's something as me economically right wing would support but i agree with the professor what happens to the landless labor now you had to have a program to rehabilitate the landless labor that would have happened in your service sector or your skill sector both of them have been hit tremendously by demonetization and gst and that those sectors like professor said unskilled uh, sectors etc unorganized sector have been completely destroyed now shantanu says the fiscal deficit is under control this is a lie it's only under control because you've cut back expenditure by cutting back expenditure today you've killed growth so there is no growth in the economy therefore you are seeing nobody investing in the economy and to my last point i want to add to one more thing the professor said on mudra of course the mudra average loan is 47000 rupees sanket i'd be glad to give you 47000 rupees start a business in delhi and show me but i have one more point 40% of the mudra loan this is government data has turned out to be npas so what is uh, you do not even have credible data not my words the honorable prime minister's words that you don't have credible data when you don't have credible data and i have to make a political point you challenge economists by chartered accountants you are making a mockery not just nationally of ourselves internationally of ourselves and therefore international confidence is dipping therefore the point you're raising is dipping the confidence in the indian economy okay uh, since since you've made that point specifically to shantanu gupta his right to reply shantanu very quickly see sanket first on the mudra loan luckily i am part of i was part of lot of lot of lot of partnership with with the uh, nbfcs in mudra loan in noida lucknow and banaras and and in the in the in the amount range of 50000 to 70000 we have procured almost 8000 second hand rickshaws food carts upgrading vegetable shops saloon parlors tailor shop very many see we are talking about india where people were not banked we are talking about in india i think uh, in my life my education loan which took me to uk my my house loan which made me buy a house credit has an important role in my 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 upliftment and but the credit was not available to to crores of indian first first after first uh, after ages they have a bank account they have access to mudra loan all of a sudden they will not have a credit history to get a 2 lakh rupees loan or 5 lakh rupees loan right so now the credit has to be built i think the argument others are making is like okay till now they never got a loan they should never get a loan or all of a sudden they should get a 5 crore loan that not happen they should make a great history i don't think any that's building up first time people have started getting for into 50000 rupees loan and and lot of and lot of and and lot of now the credit history is credit history is getting uh, see, see banking banking has a process banking has a process you should have a credit history you should have a credit score to to to, to access a credit now finally because of they being banked and they are they are being uh, offered small amounts their credit history is being uh, making build and lot of people had made meaningful employment uh, out of that okay, okay. coming to agriculture yeah. coming to agriculture, agriculture the, please the father of modern agriculture ms swaminathan the the father of modern agriculture ms swaminathan gave a, gave, gave gave a buck up to modi government beads neem coated urea be the soil health card build ina mandis be irrigation system we always talk about swaminathan report but whom swaminathan is backing modi government 
बट फॉर श्योर फॉर श्योर फॉर श्योर आई थिंक वी ऑल नो एग्रीकल्चर इज नॉट एफिशियंट इन इंडिया फिफ्टी परसेंट पीपल आर ओनली जनरेटिंग फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ जी डी पी दे समथिंग रॉन्ग इन इंडियन एग्रीकल्चर ओके very quickly prakya so it has to be modernized yeah, and like prakya to, like no it has to be modernized but you know see professor arun kumar says exactly what needs to be understood in what form we know the corporates will want to make business sense out of the agriculture sector so you get the corporates in and the moment they come in they're going to try to streamline the process perhaps good in the long run but in the short term do you realize that it will compound the problem of unemployment in this country can you wish that away pragya we'll come to you first yeah uh, can you repeat the question please no my question is this latest announcement by the prime minister the corporates must take more responsibility in the agriculture sector how do you think this playing out actually uh, sanket uh, first of all i would reply to shantanu that he was saying nbfcs uh, are uh, giving mudra loans and entrepreneurship is increasing of course it started well in 2014 15 16 till 16 it was going well but after that the condition has been deteriorated really really bad and it's in bad shape people are not getting loans he was he was just uh, giving technical jargons like uh, credit uh, score will be checked and then only those loans can be given i don't understand how 47000 rupees loan can be given on the credit rating of a person exactly on the credit rating of a person and then uh, that person will be judged whether he can repay the loan or not these loans were specifically okay. made for that unorganized sector exactly. who never paid taxes who, okay. who were not in an organized sector who 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 didn't have bank accounts and then now they are uh, okay. before giving the loans okay so i'm run, running out of time on this discussion thank you very much to all our guests uh, professor arun kumar tehsin punawala shantanu as well as pragya